First, on behalf of my family, let me take this opportunity to wish you and your families a blessed and joyous Christmas day and season. Let us pray through the written word and the spoken word. May we know your living word, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. I seem to have brought back a bug with me, so please excuse my voice. I absolutely love celebrating birthdays and Christmas. Christmas is my favorite time of the year. You may be wondering why. If you are, I will tell you. And if you aren't, I will still tell you. You see, when I was younger, I loved getting gifts and surprises from my mom. A tradition that began at midnight with cake and wine, non-alcoholic, of course, Gifts throughout the day, always what I wanted, a special lunch, sometimes a surprise, and a party or dinner at home or somewhere else. As we both got older, birthdays became more about celebrating life, this most precious gift that God has given to us. The only gift that surpasses this gift is the gift of God's Son which we are celebrating tonight. Everybody can hear me okay? Yes. I have a similar experience with Christmas as I did with birthdays. It started off being all about me and what I got. Putting up lights and decorating, cleaning and cooking, baking and fixing back the house, and of, of course, going to church. As I grew older, it became less about me and more about the baby Jesus and celebrating his birth. I don't know about you, but I have heard or watched the Christmas story as brought to us in tonight's gospel reading a thousand times, and I never get tired of it. It's the cake for the Christmas icing. This story is the stuff that Christmas should be made of. Everything else is by the way. My brothers and sisters in Christ, you know this, but I think some of us take this story for granted, or we listen and we watch, but we don't really see or hear. If this is you, you are missing out, and missing out big time. For, and at the risk of sounding cliche, Jesus is still and always will be the reason for this season, and deservingly so. Isaiah 9 verses 6 and 7 remind us that a child has been born to us, a son given to us. Authority rests on his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This child, God incarnate, his coming to us as a babe is a sign of his presence among us. Emmanuel, which means God is with us. This child was born for our benefit, died for our benefit, and will return for our benefit. Brothers and sisters, whether we are sinners or believers, that is why all authority rests on his shoulders. This child, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, and Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. Wonderful Counselor. Wonderful because he is both God and man. Counselor. He gives divine counsel to mankind for our own well-being. He is omniscient, all-knowing. The Mighty One. He is God. Sovereign, faithful ruler over all. He is omnipotent, all-powerful. Everlasting Father, He is God, one with the Father, from everlasting until everlasting. He will stand the test of time. He is omnipresent, everywhere, all the time. Prince of Peace. He is the giver and maintainer of peace, 
who reconciles us to God the Mediator. What awesome titles! Each one speaks volumes and confirms the message of hope fulfilled in the birth of Christ and the establishment of his eternal kingdom. Wonderful people of God, we are a part of that kingdom. But we need to remember and revere the gift that has been given to us, God's Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The reason for this Christmas day and season, the reason why we can truly celebrate his birth. Hymn 68 in the CPWI hymnal, which we will sing a little later, captures succinctly all that we need to celebrate about the birth of the Christ child and why. Hail the heaven-born Prince of Peace. Hail the Son of Righteousness. Light and life to all he brings. Risen with healing in his wings. Mild he lays his glory by. Born that man no more may die. Born to raise the sons and daughters of earth. Born to give them second birth. Heart the herald angels see. I'm sure you're familiar. This is great news. Wonderful even. Happy birthday, Jesus. We are thankful you were born as a babe in Bethlehem, in a stable, in a manger, to marry your virgin mother. Mr. Organist, can we please have the birthday song for Jesus, please? As is the custom here at St. Luke's, and ushers, can you please bring baby Jesus a birthday card? <coughs> Is this the best we can do for our Savior to commemorate his birth? Isn't it customary to give gifts to persons who are celebrating their birthday? Did anyone bring a gift for Jesus? Anyone? No? I see a hand. Is there anyone with a gift they can offer to God in gratitude for the gift of his only begotten son? Anyone? Pardon? Hmm. You, like, you are reading my sermon. If you can't or haven't thought of anything, Titus 2, 11 to 14 offers us some suggestions of ways we can give back to God. And I say give back because he is the source. All that we have and are is because of his love, mercy, and grace. One commentator describes this cluster of verses as explanatory in nature and didactic in tone. In other words, explaining the previous admonitions in verses 1 to 10, directed at the early Christian congregations and intended to teach particularly in moral instruction thereby validating the exhortations and still is very relevant today and to us first this passage tells us in verse 11 that god's grace appeared in jesus christ bringing salvation to all humanity god's grace basically his unmerited favor toward us human beings it is captured in ephesians 2 8 to 9 for by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. You know that well-known hymn, which I would have liked to sing, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. You and I both know we have not done anything to deserve this most precious gift of God's son. It's like God was using reverse psychology on us, thinking maybe if he saved us, we would be grateful and repay him with our lives. I wonder where he got that crazy idea and how it is working out for him. But seriously, if you really think about it, we owe him our lives and not just any old life. Verse 12 reminds us that this grace that appeared is training us to renounce impiety, 
that is, a lack of reverence for God and worldly passions. 1 John 2.15 cautions us not to love the world or the things in the world because the love of the Father is not in those who love the world. We must therefore endeavor in this present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly. Verse 13 continues, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, the advent of our King, the second coming. But it doesn't end there. Verse 14 concludes, he gave himself for us. Remember Easter, Holy Week? That he might redeem us from our sins and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. So again, I ask you, it's Jesus' birthday. What gift can you give him? I ask for a chain with a cross. Do you think he would like one too? Maybe a bicycle so he can really ride into Jerusalem or better yet, a motorcycle? Um, no. My brothers and sisters in Christ, all Jesus wants for his birthday is you. You praising him, you living lives that are pleasing to him, you using the gifts he has given you to further his kingdom and to bless him and others. This Christmas, give yourself to Jesus, the best gift ever. I teach five to six year olds, you know, teacher by day, deacon by night. At the end of last term, I organized a Christmas concert at school as directed by my principal. Each age group had to perform an item. One of the children in my age group introduced the other children and teachers to this song called A Gift to You. And I wish to introduce it to you as a fitting way to end my homily and most importantly, to say happy birthday to Jesus. It's quite simple, but the words touch me.